Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video I want to talk about the differences between capture the flags and the penetration test. So it is oriented for those of you who want to know more about the security industry and you might be interested in knowing okay what's the difference between a CTF and a penetration test. This is because if you are learning to get into the industry you will probably learn through CTFs. However, when you actually get into the industry and you start working into the industry, you will actually do a different activity, which is a penetration test. And it can be on web application, so you have a web application penetration test, on mobile application and things of the sort. So in this video, my aim is to distinguish the characteristics between capture the flag and penetration test. I hope the video is enjoyable and useful. If you have some feedback, please leave it in the comments and enjoy the video. So let's start off with capture the flag. And here I've written a bunch of characteristics of capture the flag that will allow me to discuss what's the main idea behind a CTF. So we actually start from the bottom here because CTFs have to be considered mainly for studying, practicing and having fun. So if you want to learn about security, about cybersecurity, if you actually want a playground where you can test out things, where you can just test out exploit, test out like vulnerabilities, how to write secure code, how to analyze code, then capture the flags are perfect for you because this is what they are meant. They are meant as a challenging environment for you to learn. Now, they typically focus on specific challenges. So there are categories of CTFs. For example, one category is the web category. And in this category, there are all those challenges that have to do with web technologies, like the HTTP protocol and things of the sort. So you have web application written in various languages. It could be Java, it could be Python, it could be PHP. So you have different languages and you have specific challenges other categories that have to do with the CTFs are, for example, the pawn category. Now, pawn has to do with binaries and with memory corruption errors, with buffer overflows, with heap overflows. So, like, you have a binary written in C, in C++, or in, like, uh, other languages. And the idea is to hijack the logic of the binary in order to get the flag. Because the challenges are always about getting a flag. And typically a flag is something like uh, active box, uh, then you have curly braces and here you have a value. So this constitutes a flag and the idea is that you have to exploit a technology in order to obtain the flag. So we have pawn, we have reversing, which has to do with reverse engineering. We have mobile, which has to do with the exploitation of applications that run on mobile operating system, such as iOS and Android. We have like crypto, which has to do with cryptography. So a lot of mathematics go into crypto CTF challenges. So basically the idea is that you have specific challenges. So the theme is always well known. When you set a challenge, you always know, okay, this is like a pawn challenge. Now, each challenge typically has a few ways in which it can be solved. So usually there is one intended way, which is the intended solution. But many times it also happens that the author of the challenge implements a certain technology and so it has unintended solution. It's like ways that the author did not actually think about, but they actually came to be because they were found by other researchers or just players that uh, participated in the CTF. So it means that uh, a CTF is written with a solution in mind. It can be solved. It is a game. And this is really important. This is really important for competition and for studying and for practicing. Now, sometimes you have special types of CTFs, like the boot to root machine. For example, these are the machine offered by platforms such as Actebox. In the, in the channel, I have two videos on Actebox machine. Maybe in the future, I will, bring it, I will bring more. I'm not sure yet. So you have this kind of boot to root machines that essentially have to do with concatenating a bunch of different challenges together in order to form a flow of challenges. So you start from not um, from like a normal user that interacts, for example, with a web server, with a web application, and you escalate your privileges to become the root of the server. So this is called a boot to root. And the idea in a boot root is that instead of having one challenge, you have a linear path of challenges. So one after the other. And the write up, which is the 
artifact that writes the solution to the challenge is mostly linear because since you have a, se a series of linear challenges you just write okay this is how I got inside the machine this is how I escalated my privilege this is how I change account from one account to another this is how I became the administrator of the server so it is very linear now the fact that CTFs are linear and they are made of single challenges has nothing to do with the difficulty because actually it can be extremely extremely hard to solve various CTFs depending on the level of difficulties and specifically since they are custom implemented by other researchers they can showcase situations which you would normally not find in the real world like they could ask you to exploit a certain scenario which is extremely complex and it doesn't really happen in the real world but since the CTF is sort of like a synthesized world, it is a practice environment, you can control much better the environment. So you can impose the requirements that you desire on the environment in order to allow for a specific solution to a challenge. So that's essentially the idea. And of course, it means that the code for a CTF is written by other security researchers, which means that they know the basic concept of security, they know how to protect against vulnerabilities and stuff like that. So they are really aiming for you to find that path, to find that idea and to implement it. Of course, you can implement it in different ways, but typically the idea is one, the exploit is one, the vulnerability is one, or sometimes it happens that the same vulnerability can have different exploitation path, so different ways to actually exploit and attack the challenge essentially but it's mostly made within the security industry, within the security community. And this brings us to the most important part. A CTF is not about assessing security risk. It is about studying, it is about competing with other teams, it is about having fun. It is not about assessing the security risk. Why? Because this instead is the main objective of, of a penetration test. So this is like one of the really important difference to understand. When we learn about security, we typically do it through CTFs. So we learn how to technically exploit vulnerabilities. We learn how to think about vulnerabilities, how to think about all the commands or the tooling, burp suite um, and map and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we typically do not develop an awareness regarding security risk. Now, when we actually get to a job, when we actually work, it is all about security risk. Why? Because companies that pay for your work, that pay for a penetration test, what they want to do is they want to assess the security risk of a web application if it's a web application penetration test. So the idea is that a penetration test is focused on a specific scope where the scope defines the list of hosts that need to be tested. And each host can implement multiple services that run on the web. So they can implement more, one or more web application and or services exposed through web technology. So we are talking about HTTP protocol, about web framework languages such as Java, Python, .NET and things like that. WebSocket is another protocol in the web context. So the idea is that I have different applications and I want to assess the security risk of the application. Now this means that since the objective of a penetration test is to assess the overall security risk of an application, given a threat model, we will come back to the idea of threat model, so given that we have to assess the entire security risk, it means that all vulnerabilities must be reported. So it is not just about getting to an administrator. Actually, that rarely happens. It is more about understanding the different sections, the different parts that make up a web application and understanding for each part where are the security risks and how those security risks are handled by the application. So this means in practice that in a penetration test, you will report vulnerabilities that typically do not make sense in the context of a capture the flag. For example, consider a case of a user enumeration. So we have a user enumeration anytime the application exposes certain functionalities such as the login functionality in a way that allows an actor, like a malicious actor, to understand which are the users registered on the application database. So for example, I can test a username like Leo 
If the application tells me, look, this user exists, but the password is wrong, then I have a case of user enumeration. That is, a malicious attacker can potentially enumerate all the users by just querying them. Like if I have a username, the application tells me, okay, this is a valid username, it exists on the application, or this is not a valid username, it does not exist. Now, if the application tells me like this, I can enumerate all the users. What an application should do instead is just say, look, wrong credential. Like it doesn't matter if what is wrong is the username or the password. In any case, you just write wrong credential. So I'm saying this just to showcase that in a penetration test, you will have to report vulnerabilities, which maybe do not have a high security risk. We are talking about low or medium security risk, but are still important for a business to know. Because, as I said, the objective of, of a penetration test is to assess the entire the overall security risk. Now, when I mention this thing, I mention also the concept of threat model. A threat model, not threat, thread. A threat model. So what is a threat model? I will make a specific video about it because it is an extremely important topic. But to give like an approximated description of it, essentially, it is how we model the attacker. It's like we ask ourselves, okay, what can an attacker do? What can an attacker do to attack the application? For example, a very simple threat model is that, okay, the attacker is a simple client of the application. So yes, normal technology, like a normal web browser, normal connection to the internet, and is able to access our website. Now, this is a very basic threat model. Maybe we say, okay, the attacker does not have too many computational capacity. Like we just describe the characteristics of the attacker, what he's able to do, the equipment that he has, all the things that he can do. And then we say, okay, given this model, given this description, given this attacker, what are the consequences given our security risk and how it is structured? The idea is that first you want to understand what kind of threat modeling you are doing. Once you have the threat model down, you start a penetration test based on that threat model and you're like, okay, with respect to this threat model, the security risks are as follows. As I said, in typical penetration testing uh, scenarios, the threat model is that of a normal user. Maybe you can make it more complex and you can say, look, uh, the attacker is able to have certain types of accounts in our web application. He's not necessarily an admin, but maybe he's like a middle privilege user. What can he do with those new privileges and stuff like that? So that's the main difference. Also, another difference is that since we have to report all vulnerabilities, the report is much more important and much more structured and complex. Because even if a challenge is really hard, at the end of the day, the report will describe linearly the solution. It can still be difficult to understand, of course, but the structure of the write-up is pretty straightforward and well-known. In terms of the report for a penetration test, the idea is to describe all the various vulnerabilities and then you can structure however you want. Like there are different methods and ways of doing that. Maybe we can see them in a later video. So the idea is that the report will have to contain all the knowledge regarding the vulnerabilities found in the application. And of course, for each vulnerability, if you want your report to be of high value, you need to provide a proof of concept, a POC. Because without a POC, the vulnerability is really difficult to understand. You want to make sure that the developers and the business that hired you for a penetration test knows exactly the risk and they are able to reply all the tests that you did on the application. So every time you report something, if you want it to be of high value, like meaningful, you have to provide a proof of concept. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. And when you're doing a penetration test, like a web, web application penetration test, the technologies are not written with a solution in mind. So there's no solution. There are no challenges here. It's just real world code. It is code written by developers which might not be aware of security concept. This means that uh, when you're doing penetration tests, you have to get into the mind of a developer, not of a security researcher. Because when you get into the mind of a security researcher, most what happens essentially is that you will find complex solution. You will, you will create more complex scenario in your mind. While if you focus on the mind of a developer, typically what happens is that the attacks themselves are not too sophisticated most of the time. 
However, the technology is typically more complex. Why? Because production code is never easy to understand. Production code is always messy because a lot of people work on production code. It is very complex, especially if the application is big and it offers many services and it interoperates with many different uh, servers and stuff like that. So typically technologies are way, way more complex than CTF challenges. So they, they like if you find a vulnerability, the exploit most of the time is not too complex. However, the technology usually is. You have much more inputs. You have much more like things to analyze, sort of. So it's a difficult in a different sense. And of course, doing a penetration test is extremely useful for decreasing risk of web application. And this is what produces value to companies and developers. I mean, doing a good penetration test is about assessing the overall security of the application, reporting it, so writing a report that is clear, easy to understand, so that the developers can fix the high level risk vulnerabilities and they can just know and understand the medium to low risk vulnerabilities. Because not all vulnerabilities must be fixed, only those that will affect the business, that will produce a cost to the consumer and to the owner of the business. So essentially, this is the main difference between a capture the flag and a penetration test. So to give a quick recap of what I've said, capture the flags are useful challenges made up for learning, for competing with other people, for playing with your friends and for studying new technologies. They are written by other security researchers, they typically focus on specific challenges, and sometimes you will have a concatenation of different challenges in so-called boot-to-root scenarios and other scenarios of the sort. However, each challenge typically has one or two ways to be solved, and it is written with a solution in mind. It is written to be vulnerable with a solution in mind. If you have to write a write-up, the write-up is mostly a linear structure. And it, it is not used to assess the security risk of a given application. And the situation you find in CTS can be highly complex. And sometimes there are things that you will never find in the real world. Now, comparing this to a penetration test, the idea is that the penetration test is focused on a specific scope, which is made up of a series of hosts, each of which can host one or more web applications. And the idea is that you have to find all vulnerabilities that you can. It is an extremely non-linear scenario. You have to write a much more structured and complex report in terms of the things you will find detailed with the various um, proof of concepts, with the various POCs. And the idea is that the objective of a, of a penetration test is to assess the overall security risk. So you have to change mindset. It is not about finding the solution. It is about describing and understanding the security risk of the application in terms of like software security, of course. And this security is based on a given threat model. So in the report, essentially, the proof of concept works like this. Suppose you are an authenticated user with these privileges, then you are able to do this action. You are able to elevate your privileges or you are able to obtain a remote code execution, things of the sort. The code is not written with a solution in mind. It is written for providing a services to customers. And so it is written by developers. And the objective of a penetration test is just to decrease the risk of web application. To first understand the risk, so later you can decrease it. The vulnerabilities that you find in a penetration test are typically less sophisticated. However, the technologies are much more complex in your world scenario because production code is never easy. And the most important thing is that you have to report all vulnerabilities that you find. It does not matter if you obtain RC in one method. And then you're like, in a CTF, you, you'll be like, okay, I got the flag, I'm good. In a penetration test, you have to say, okay, maybe I can obtain it in a different method, exploiting a different path, which represents a different vulnerabilities. And maybe there are even more. I mean, if you find three remote code execution on a penetration test, that web application is really, really dangerous. So that's the idea. You have to find all vulnerabilities and you have to write them into a report, 
which you can structure as you choose. So there are different ways of structuring a report. So that's it for this video. I hope it was useful because knowing the difference between CTS and penetration test will allow you to better approach the industry. It's totally okay to learn from capture the flag. This is what I did, for example. However, when you get into the industry, understand that you have to expand your awareness of security into understanding the concept of security risk. And we will discuss about security risk in a later video.